Okie dokie. Full screen. I put a lot of stuff on the board already because I want to kind of zip through this one. I'm a big fan of repetition. I just want to get some conversations started, continue with the same conversations and develop them so that uh, insights can be had. So let's hope that maybe a few insights can be had. All right. So algebra to calculus, very quickly, we've spent 11 lesson sets writing the equation of a line. It should be mechanically there. I think it is for everyone in the class. Um, so writing the equation of a line for this quadratic, 2.01, 4.004, 001. No need for a calculator there, some real patterns. And what do we get? In point slope form, we look at the relationship between the change in y, y2 minus y1, which in this case is 0 0.004001, change in x, 0 0.001, times x2 minus x1 gives us a relationship that appears to be true. And I think the simplicity of it sometimes goes right out the window. Okay? So there's a, there's a statement that's true. And of course, this is gonna become variable and then this will become variable. And that's where really the linear functions come from. But in this case, I'm just proving a relationship in the table. So I might've misspoke already in this video. That's not an equation of line. That's really the, the formation of one. Okay, until I put in variables, these are fixed numbers right now whose relationship we can see, well, that's true. And I wanna focus your attention on the fact that this change is really, when we divide by 0.001 here into 0 0.040, we're basically getting a four to one, very close, very close to a four to one ratio. A little bit off. Okay, let's do the next one. Get that chair out of the way. Um, three, now I added a decimal place. Instead of three decimal places, I've changed by four. And I hope you can see the relationship between three and six, and I didn't write this out again. I just wrote it as, well, the change in y on this side is equal to the change in x times the ratio of changes. Again, so simple it might go, but it's true, and we can see the change in x is canceling, giving us the change in y's. Well, what do we have here, really? We have differences, right? 0 0.06001 to 9 is a difference. But if we say differential, whoo, I think we, start, we sound smarter. So I'm going to use differential so I can sound smarter too. Right? We have differentials. And it looks like those differentials here can be canceled out of the problem to get us a simple statement that is true. Right? And well, how would you define these differentials? Well, this differential, dx, it's a small differential of x. I think I can use that language here, right? And I can make it even smaller. And I still get a pattern emanating from this calculation when I look at how do things change in the squaring process from four to 4.0, oh, five decimal places, gets me five decimal places, but this time that's an eight. Boy, it looks like it's two times the X value. That's what it appears to be. And if I change, that multiplication, remember it's a multiplication and I bring it to the other side, I think I'm defining the slope of the quadratic at any instant. I think that at three and at four and at, at two, at three and at four, I think at two I'm going up to four to one, at three, six to one, at four, eight to one, and at zero, ooh, Two times zero, zero, and it sure looks flat there. Okay, well, all well and good. So let's extend this now. Let me get my Rene the cart over here. We'll take her for a ride. And let's look at some relationships that, uh, oh, I guess I put this up there too, because I wanted to say, you know, we've been working with differentials in the exponential model, the first 11 lesson sets, right? And how do we get from three to six? Well. Get rid of the three, bring in the six, and there's your doubling. You know, it's a, it's a ratio of change here that really we're establishing for how this thing changes, changes in a ratio. That's what exponential functions do. They change in ratios, and the ratios could have been four to one. Would have taken more time, right? But there's all kinds of things to be seen here. We just spend enough time, and all we did was talk for two minutes so far, maybe longer, but let's go over, let's take 
let's not run a take the computer for a ride and let's make a connection from what we're doing now to what we just did over there let's try to make a couple of quick connections which you know will take time for you hearing it the first time if this is the first time you're hearing this stuff well you got to have time to process things but how are you going to process things if you go through things two or three days and then move to another topic but we'll just talk about it for a minute here and we'll keep talking about it in the future lesson sets what have we done thus far we put these things in graphing form right we've done minus b over 2a we've got a 5 we put it in there we get minus 43 i did it over here for you to see but you could do it that quickly, right? 20 divided by four, you can write five. Put the five in, you get minus 100, cut it in half, minus 50 plus seven, right? You could do that quickly. And then we can see, and we can see even better in a minute, at the end of the video, I hope I remember to say this, but the, the, the y-intercept is on this side. Of course, zero is less than five, but it's also, you could have looked here and you're on the decreasing side. So that's where the y-intercept is. And we got ourselves a graph. Now, how would we do it with calculus? Do the same problem with calculus. Rene over here. Okay. Um, well, remember what we said. The slope at this instant is zero. So how do I get a derivative in calculus? Well, I know x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And if I double it, I get 4x. And the rate of change of that line is down 20 to 1. So if at any time you're not going over 1 and down 20, over 1 and down 20 over 1 and down 50, well, then you're not on that line, right? So that's constant change. Linear function has constant change. And if we set that to 0, lo and behold, we get that 5. And of course, we could plug it back in to get the minus 43. And we could also ask ourselves, hmm, what's the rate of change at the y-intercept? Well, let's put 0 in. 0 minus 20, minus 20. And that goes back to what we just said a minute ago. Let's extend this even further. And I suggest you play the video four days in a row, five minutes a day, you'll be in a different place mentally, okay? So I've drawn a square. I've used my thumb to cut the marker in half. That's a two by two square. I'm gonna change it into a three by three square. So that's there. Oh Lord, oh, I gotta go there. And I gotta go there and then there. Okay, three by three squared. Something like that. I mean, this is a continuous function. X squared is a continuous function. So if we're here, there's got to be a method to get to the next value, and we should be able to see how it happens. Well, we have a magic square. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the length of that side of the square by dx, which is conceptual. It's point oh No, it's point oh No, it's point oh And we can push air out the window when we work with a value like that. And it's kind of like coloring in the area here. And I hope you can see that I'm adding a layer of change. It's pretty hard to show 0.01. But that square area just got a little bigger. And if I put a hinge here and I swing that up, then I have that height. And I decided to match that up, try to match that up exactly to this. Okay? And I think I've done a decent job. So this is a 2x graph, right? And if you put the number, if this is 1, then that is x equals 2 right here, right? And if I erase everything else right here, then that is my new layer of area. That's my new layer of area. If I swing it up, right? I think as I keep going along, area, 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 right? Eventually this box is gonna be nine units of area. And I think every time I do that, I could add another strip. I'll actually go back to where it was. Another strip, a little bit bigger than the previous one. And I would eventually, Fill in that entire area here with what? Rectangles defined to be, can you see the bottom of that? Barely. And so what's the width? Well, the width is dx. How am I getting heights? 
Well, I got to figure out what X I'm at. This is X equals three. So that height is going to be two times three. This is going to be a six unit height. This is going to be a four unit height. Well, that's a trapezoid. You don't need calculus for a trapezoid. The width, which is two. Uh, no, width is one, sorry. From three to two, the width is one divided by two. Altitude on the left, altitude on the right, and half of 10 is five. And the original was a two by two, four to a three by three. I think we can see the amounts of those. And oh, let's go right over here and explain what that is symbolically. So what I did is I integrated this side, I integrated this side, and this appears to be giving me the squaring function. Now, I don't want to get into plus C right now. There's enough on your plate. Okay, but what that really is doing is measuring the change from two to three. Hmm. And x squared, uh, putting three into x squared gets you nine, and putting two in gets you four, and that's really the change. And that's really what the fundamental theorem of calculus is about. Here, if we divide by dx, we get two x, and that's what differentiation is. And there, they're brother and sister, they're linked, all right? And um, I guess that's enough. That's enough to think about right now. But when you study calculus, there's all kinds of, all kinds of different connections to slopes, patternable disk. In fact, if I told you what the, um, the derivative, if y equals ln of x, hmm, Put a one over X here. Lots to learn. All right, that's enough food for thought for today. And Yasser, if I made a mistake, you let me know. Thank you.